Good morning, everyone. The primary text I want to share with you today may seem strange for such a time as this. Uh, it comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. It goes like this. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Dr. Henry Cloud is a Christian uh, psychologist and author that I follow. I was at a conference where he spoke once uh, many years ago, and he shared a story about a rather crude study that had recently been done on monkeys. Uh, they, were, they were measuring the levels of cortisol in the brain. This is a hormone that is associated with high stress. So they put this poor monkey in a cage, and they turned on flashing lights and loud sounds, and basically scared this, this monkey, terrified this monkey. And, and when it was over, they measured his levels of cortisol to see how stressed out he was. And then they repeated the test, but they made one small difference. They put another monkey in the cage with him. Now, when they did all the same things to both of these monkeys together and then measured their cortisol levels, it was down by more than half. And as he ended this story, Henry Cloud made this statement, and I, and I jotted it down in my notes. He said, and I quote, The lone monkey was only half as good at handling stress as the pair was together. So, my question for you guys, who's your monkey? <laughs> End quote. My friends, we need each other, especially in our troubling moments, but always. God made us that way. Think about it. In, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, when God is getting ready to make mankind, this is what he says, let us make mankind in our image. Now think about his language there. Who is he referring to when he says us? It must be uh, the remaining two of the Trinity. Remember, the Trinity is God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now what does this tell us? God is three in one. He literally exists in relationship. That, that's an essential element to his existence, relationship. And we are made in his image. If this be true, it shouldn't surprise us that we were made first to be in relationship with God and second to be in relationship with each other. We are relational beings above all other things. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, If anyone is, is caught in transgression, restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Galatians 6, 2, Bear one another's burdens. James 5, 16, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Romans 12, 15, Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. We see it all over the Bible. We are meant to be in relationship with each other. Listen, I've said it before, and I'm going to keep saying it through this entire process. We may have to be physically isolated right now, but that does not mean that we have to be relationally isolated. I've had some of the most meaningful conversations with people during this time. I have both lifted others up and been lifted up myself. And so I have two things to say to you today. Number one, you are not alone. You're not alone in this. One of the biggest strategies of the adversary is that he wants to get you to believe that your suffering is unique from everyone else. Nobody understands you, and so why even reach out for help? He wants you to feel isolated. But listen, we're all in this together. We're all in the same boat. For the sake of the, of the illustration above, we are all in the same cage. Many of us have different circumstances. Some are at more risk because of health conditions. Some have <clears throat> are, are mothers expecting uh, babies. Uh, I know people who've had babies and are getting ready to have babies uh, in this week and next week. Some of us are, are first responders on the front lines of this thing. It's hitting us all in unique ways, but listen, it is hitting us all. So don't believe the lie that you're alone. Aside from the powerful truth that God is with you and knows your suffering, so do we. Stay in contact with other people. That's my second point. Stay in contact with people. Listen, you don't have to be isolated. Use your phone. 
Use Facebook or texting or write letters, whatever you like to do, email. Check on each other, especially those you know who have to remain home alone. Anytime anyone crosses your mind, reach out to them. You've got the time. Our small group still meets on Zoom every Wednesday. We still are having our staff and elder meetings online. I FaceTime with members of my family multiple times a day. I'm having regular daily conversations with mentors and dear friends and members in our congregation. Why? Not because I am anything, but because I need it. And I know that you guys need it. It is selfish, perhaps, but it's also how we were made. So let me begin, I'm sorry, let me end where we began in Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 24 to 25. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. How can you stir up other people to love and good works? Well, part of the answer is in verse 25. Don't neglect meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But encourage one another. You can do that from afar. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. No matter what happens with this coronavirus thing, the day, capital D, according to my, this particular translation, is still coming when the Lord will return and the dead will rise and we will be with him in heaven one day. And Paul says that anything we've gone through here on earth will seem like a light momentary struggle compared to the glory we will behold. We'll see you tomorrow.